Hi guys. It is another hot, sticky, miserable, humid, smoky dog day afternoon there in the collapse of global industrial civilization where we have slipped and stumbled into Thursday, I believe it's August 26, 2021. Somewhere around there and the little dog and I need to gear up to head to the Candor New York Farmers Market this afternoon to try to unload I think about 600 ears of organic uh, Organic non GMO corn and I'm sure we're gonna get there and find ten other guys with truckloads of 600 ears of corn to try to unload so while uh, Madagascar, I guess, heading into a drought here in the Finger Lakes of New York, organic farmers are just going to be throwing probably tons of food, in, in, you know, into the compost pile. I cannot, uh, anybody listening to this who wants to come to Bugs in a Jar Farm and load up on uh, homegrown organic vegetables, they are right here. Come load up. Uh, you know, I'm getting a little bit irritated on the absolute lack of interest in, uh, in food. But anyway, uh, before I do that, do what I do every day, and that's chronicle the collapse of the planet. And guys, y y you know, it's really... A, a tough call on, uh, you know, since this hopium, since uh, all of this, you know, grabbing at hopium. It's, I, I think this is what James Howard Kunstler calls magical thinking that you're going to see as the collapse of society and the planet unfolds. You're going, the, the amount of apocalyptic hopium is just going to go through the roof and and I can make an entire channel called uh, magical thinking in, in the collapse but, uh, but but I mean how much attention do I put on this hilarious you know the this darkly black comedy of this hopium and how much do I talk about you know things that matter so uh, I'm just gonna give a little nod to the hopium I think it was brother JJ who sent me this from the BBC this is straight ahead apparently without a note of irony uh, from the BBC yesterday will I still be able to fly in a net zero world I'm going to read the first few sentences of this and then we're going to head over to Afghanistan. Take it away, BBC. How much of an impact on UK lifestyles will the government's goal of net zero carbon emissions really have? A new report says that while the 2050 target will require significant efforts from consumers these should not result these should not result in quote massive lifestyle changes yes the study from the Tony Blair Institute for Global Change yes the the Tony Blair Institute for Global Change is somewhat like the Sancho Panza Institute for the uh, Welfare of Chipmunks. Okay, well, let's look at the source here. So what does the Tony Blair uh, Institute for Global Change have to tell people concerned whether they need to reduce flying around the world by the year 2050? The new study says that limitations on flying would need people to cut their travel by airplane by, I, I, I'm going to give you three choices. Okay, one of these is the, uh, the real choice. Are they saying that uh, Brits, by the year 2050, that do Brits need to cut their flying by 50 
percent per year by 25 percent or by six percent if your answer was six six percent give yourself a gold star but of course uh, as it mentions in here uh, only half of Britons ever got on an airplane last year so uh, let's let's talk about cars for cars the paper says that auto travel you know how much you miles uh, you put on your car every year should be cut by I don't know 50 percent 25 percent or how about four percent by the year 2050 the average Brit needs to cut their car miles if your answer was four percent this is the significant lifestyle and consumer changes you need to make if you live in Britain by the year 2050 cut your car use by four percent and your plane travel by six percent the planet is saved but anyway guys I could go on uh, with this but I think we've heard enough as hilarious as that as that is you know I have not weighed in on this whole Afghanistan story I mean there's enough going on in Afghanistan uh, okay I am a doomer all right uh, I, I don't get involved much in all of this political stuff. I really don't. My view of this, and I admit I have not uh, examined it that much, is that the average Afghani, uh, probably uh, their level of misery is about the same, uh, whether, uh, whether it's the damn Taliban or the U.S. Empire. Uh, you know, uh, if your choice is the U.S. military or the Taliban, uh, but anyway, it probably has something to do with this, but we're going to go over for a facet of the story that I do think uh, is germane to the, uh, certainly the collapse of global industrial civilization, if not the planet. This is coming out of... Well, of course, off of Yahoo News from Axios. I think Axios is uh, that Axios is a lefty. Oh, we have a breaking news announcement right here. Pentagon says explosion reported outside Kabul airport amid evacuations. Yes. So anyway, uh, that is an ongoing uh, an explosion, but uh, which certainly adds to this. Afghanistan is a preview of future migration crises. <clears throat> the Afghanistan situation, hundreds of thousands of people desperate to flee their country with few safe and accepting places to go is just one sign of a future that will be shaped by a growing migration crisis. Whether because of violence, persecution, climate change, or economic distress, rising numbers of people will leave the only homes they have ever known in search of a safer and better life abroad even as the politics in destination countries sour on accepting them. This is pretty much uh, collapse uh, Mad Max 101 for anybody who understands uh, what's, going, what's ramping up uh, on this planet. Even before their government collapsed in the face of American military withdrawal, prompting a mad dash for safety, now ending in an explosion, by people who had worked with, with the U.S. and feared Taliban persecution, 
Afghans were fleeing their country in huge numbers already. So when the U.S. military uh, was over there, uh, and I was thinking of doing this article written by an Afghan, uh, by someone living over there, explaining the fact, the what the U.S. was doing over in Afghanistan had absolutely nothing to do with democracy. It's the fact that Af Afghanistan is sitting on one trillion dollars in natural resources. That is the only reason the U.S. military uh, was over there, uh, was for the resources. But anyway, that's another story for another time. So uh, let's look at what it looked like before last week. According to the UN, one and a half million Afghans fled to Pakistan in the year 2020, while another 780,000 escaped to neighboring Iran. You know, guys, when you are fleeing to Pakistan or Iran, in search of a better life for you and your children, you know you're doomed. Uh, yes, heading to Pakistan to improve your life. Yes. All right. That is just one part, Afghan, Afghanistan, is just one part of a growing migration crisis around the world on the U.S. southern border. Officials reported nearly 200,000 encounters with migrants in July, the highest monthly total in nearly two decades. How about dangerous migrant boat departures from northern Africa to southern Europe have been increasing in recent months and more than 1,100 people uh, have died. Well, the official count is much higher than any 1,100. Officially, they have fished out more than 1,100 uh, people uh, crossing the Mediterranean so far this year. Um, okay, let's go global here. Globally, 82 Point four million people worldwide had been forcibly displaced from their homes as the end of 2020, more than twice the total 10 years earlier. And, and wait till the statistics 10 years from now. Nearly half of those people had been forced to leave their countries of origin with the other half uh, displaced internally inside their own countries. Those numbers are only likely to grow. According to a study from last year, which I'm pretty sure I remember covering here, more than one billion people globally could be displaced by 2050 solely because of climate change and its destabilizing effects. Uh, but as I'm sure as Book Hermit will point out, a lot more than one billion people between now and 2050 will be running for their lives for other reasons. <clears throat> Growing numbers of migrants and refugees are escaping their homes at the very moment when international politics toward migration have turned sharply negative, according to the UN's refugee agency, last year fewer than 35,000 refugees out of 20.7 were actually, you know, you know, legally, literally, actually resettled in a new country. This is a fraction of 1%. 1% were resettled by official, uh, ch official channels. Let's look at Greece. 
Uh, Greece, which saw nearly one million refugees enter its territory after the 2015 Syrian crisis, is now erecting a 25-mile-long, heavily surveilled fence along its border with Turkey to stop asylum seekers coming in from Afghanistan. And in the U.S., the Supreme Court on Tuesday blocked uh, the Biden administration's efforts to roll back former President Trump's remain in Mexico policy for asylum seekers coming to our southern border. The White House itself has expedited deportations and repeatedly urged migrants to not come to the U.S. Now, of course, anybody uh, a remotely a Republican and conservative would be slamming the BS detected button on that. And guys, uh, I, I have to admit, uh, you, you know, uh, the Alex Jones crowd on the uh, on the border, uh, they 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 have a point. Uh, what is unfolding is one of the mega trends of the 21st century. One of the mega trends of the 21st, otherwise known as the collapse of the 21st century. More people willing and often forced to leave their homes and a colder welcome in destination countries, including the U.S. A recent Harvard-Harris poll found that 80% of Americans think undocumented immigration is a very serious or somewhat serious problem, while 64% think the government should institute stricter border policies to reduce the border flow leaving the political landscape on the immigration, quote, incredibly polarized, uh, notes Dick Burke, the CEO of the immigration services company Envoy Global. Over in Europe, uh, European leaders fearful of another populist backlash are resistant to taking on Afghan refugees with EU foreign policy chief Joseph Borrell Fontelles saying recently that EU member states want to, quote, ensure no wide scale migratory move toward Europe, close quote. The corona panic led to unprecedented border closures around the world which choked off both documented and undocumented migration while possibly setting a template for future restrictions. This is Alec Ross, a former U.S. diplomat and author of the forthcoming book, The Raging 2020s. Quote, if the principal political and economic binary of the world 20 years ago was left versus right, today it is open versus closed, said Ross. While politics and public opinion are trending in the direction of a closed world, other factors point toward the need for more migration, not less. And this is where Axios turns weird. What, another trend you're going to see with the lefty media is they're going to try to spin uh, migration as a good thing. You're going to see more and more of the lefty media uh, trying to convince the 80% of Americans uh, and probably 80% of Europeans stay the hell out of my country that this is a good thing. So uh, what does the leftist media uh, gonna say? 
Yes, low fertility rates mean that aging rich countries will need more people. Yes, uh, as population growth continues in many of the countries that are already generating migrants and asylum seekers, mainly talking about sub-Saharan Africa, that you see the highest birth rates in the countries generating the most people trying to get uh, their asses out of the very countries. And of course, it is a good thing, according to the lefty media, we need more young sub-Saharan African men selling selfie sticks to honky tourists in Europe. This is a good thing for Europe and the planet, uh, but it is a good thing for the lemurs and every other species of uh, earthling that the sub-Saharan Africans would otherwise be eating. So every time a sub-Saharan African uh, makes it to Europe without drowning in the Mediterranean Sea, a lemur in Madagascar or a bonobo in the Congo breathes a sigh of relief. <clears throat> the economic benefits of immigrants, including asylum seekers, are real. And the U.S. will, quote, definitely need them if we're going to economically compete with China, close quote, writes economist Noah Smith. So according to Axios, what is the bottom line? A more open world may be the right one for both altruistic and self-interested reasons, but getting there requires dismantling both physical and political barriers. So, uh, tear down the wall, and guys, you, you know, I admit, uh, like, like many people, like many former snowflakes turned doomers, I am conflicted uh, about this whole immigration thing. Uh, you know, I look at it from planet-wide. A, a human on the planet is a human mm -hmm. on the planet. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, where they come from, where they're going. Humans are humans. And uh, I will say it here on Collapse Chronicles, I have nothing to be embarrassed about this. I have always said my immigration policy uh, I noticed I was being called out by, uh, you, you know, those people we don't mention on this table uh, a couple of weeks ago were, were calling me out for, I have nothing to apologize. This would be the Sam Mitchell uh, immigration policy. I am, I'm, I am proud of this, is that every time a person emigrates to another country. It makes no difference in my immigration policy what country they're emigrating from or what country they're going to. It is irrelevant if, uh, if an Afghan is trying to get into Pakistan, if a Pakistani is trying to get into Afghanistan, if a Mexican is trying to get into the U.S., if a gringo is trying to move to Mexico to get away from the U.S., the number one and the only policy is they need to get sterilized in order to be uh, accepted into a new country. That immigrant needs to be sterilized. No more questions asked. It is irrelevant what color your skin is, uh, what your purpose is. I don't care. You need to get sterilized. Vasectomies to the left, tubal ligations to the right, and get your green card. And uh, I have nothing to apologize 
to uh, to the uh, person and his uh, well not his wife uh, calling me out recently on their channel for being a uh, what was it being a racist uh, being I am a human racist we need to sterilize the human race uh, and the best place to start, the easiest, most sensible place to start, is making it the number one uh, requirement uh, of getting, uh, of allowing someone into the country. This would uh, overnight uh, solve uh, so many problems. Anyway, I realize I'm talking to myself and I have to. Uh, get down to the local farmers market to uh, try to unload about 500 ears of my organic save the planet corn so I can join 10 other guys with pickup trucks full of their organic corn so again one more time anybody listening to this who wants to come to Bugs in a Jar Farm load up on some fresh organic corn and other veggies we're off to decrease food insecurity in the Finger Lakes while we still can. Bye, guys. That is the sound of uh, a washer and dryer being... Uh, we're bringing a washer and dryer here into uh, Bugs in a Jar Farm, so... Uh, the tiny house will now have a laundromat. Bye, guys.